name's George Brown. I'm a uh, working farm manager. I've lived on the Wallabundry Creek system now. I've been associated with it 60 years. Lived here for 50 years and worked on it. Seen the, the water quality degrade dramatically to what it used to be. The carp have taken over. When I was young, I used to be able to catch all the native fish and uh, nothing else. But now if you go fishing, you only catch European carp 90% of the time. The Lachlan River means different things to different people. For me, I see it's the lifeblood of the Lachlan catchment. It's like the arteries running through the, the Lachlan catchment. And if we have a healthy river, we're going to have a healthy catchment. In the Lachlan catchment, carp are widespread and they actually make up a huge proportion of um, the fish there. Studies that have been undertaken by Fisheries New South Wales estimate that it's up to 80% of biomass. So that's the whole amount of fish by weight. Nearly 80% are made up by carp. In terms of the Lachlan, it's, it's not in great condition. If you compare that to other river systems throughout the Murray-Darling Basin, Lachlan has a pretty poor report card. And there's a range of reasons why this is so, with carp being one of those. But also we've got issues with loss of habitat in terms of water quality and particularly turbidity. So that's the muddiness of the water. This can be through erosion occurring and also um, disturbance by fish species like carp. Hi, my name's Martin Asmus. I work for uh, Department of Primary Industries uh, for Fisheries New South Wales. Within Fisheries New South Wales, we do a whole host of work on native fish um, and introduced or, or alien fish. Um, so we do lots of biodiversity surveys just to see um, how the fish, uh, the native fish stocks are going. Fish are a really good indicator of, uh, of um, how healthy a waterway is. And similarly, the, the presence of uh, introduced fish like carp give us some indication of, uh, of how degraded it is also. They were introduced to Australia in, in the 1860s. So they've been here a very long time, but they were contained for, for much of that period before that big explosion in the 70s. So that, that flooding in the, in the 70s pretty much dispersed the, the strains that were within Australia at the time um, throughout the basin. One of the challenges that we have is, is trying to tease out the effects that are perceived to uh, be caused by carp um, as opposed to other man-made um, problems like river regulation, um, habitat degradation and, and all those other things that are impacting on the environment and not necessarily attributed to carp. One of the other introduced fish that we work on is, is redfin, English perch. And so carp and redfin are very different in that um, redfin are a predator. So they will actually actively feed on, uh, on other native fish and juveniles and, and fingerlings. So whereas carp don't eat native fish, the other difference is that redfin aren't in the same sort of huge numbers as carp just due to their reproductive output. You know, a good sized mature carp will put out maybe one or two million eggs, um, whereas redfin will be maybe a tenth of that. So the Lachlan CMA is undertaking a, a, a project in dealing with carp. It's called the Lachlan River Carp Cleanup Project and we do a number of things. We have developed a business plan to look at the viability of a commercial carp fishing operation within the Lachlan. We actually subsidise commercial carp fishing in the Lachlan, and that's basically to gain information about the, the hot spots of where the carp are breeding and finding out population densities of carp and if they are indeed viable. Also, we um, look at sponsoring events, community events such as carp fishing competitions and carp cooking demonstrations. We work with landholders to restore habitat and this is important because by restoring habitat it actually favours our native fish over carp. So if we can get good habitat back into our streams, basically our native fish will start competing against the, the carp. So instead of an 80-20 uh, mix, we might get it back to a 50-50. So we had uh, a commercial fishing effort. So Keith Bell from KNC Fisheries down at Sale was brought in and so uh, he, he put a huge commercial effort into, into some of the bigger areas like Lake Ajelago and Lake Brewster. We ran uh, pheromone trials, basically uh, implanting a hormone within a female carp, um, holding her within a cage, 
uh, and then the idea was that the, the pheromone actually promoted or forced the, the female to keep producing um, attractant pheromones and so that would bring the males into the trap. At the same time we also put uh, some carp separation cages uh, on two fishways within the uh, Lachlan catchment and so the idea behind carp separation cages is that they're, they're attached to the exit of the fishways and what carp tend to do when they're, when they're penned within a cage is the first thing they'll do is burrow and the second thing is they'll, they'll jump and basically the carp exit they hit a, uh, a jumping baffle and they jump into a holding cell and the natives are sort of they stay there uh, until the cage lifts on the, on the exit side and they happily swim away. More than a decade ago the, the idea of a, of a couple of biological controls um, such as Daudalus carp and, and the Koi herpes virus um, were instigated so um, the idea behind Daudalus carp is that they can uh, basically build into the, the genes of the fish oh, and the chromosomes of the fish um, like a, a female lethal gene. Only males will be um, produced as offspring and so over generations they would actually breed themselves out. Uh, koi herpes acts very differently, it's, it's a virus, highly virulent to, uh, to local carp and cross-species testing at the moment shown that it's not virulent to, uh, to native fish. Both those biological con controls um, on their own though won't control or eradicate carp. So basically you need what's called an integrated pest management approach and roll out both of those consecutively as well as have all your other options open and you know every tool in the toolbox as they, as they say. So still be continually physically removing via commercial fishing, um, carp separation cages and pretty much any other um, place that they accumulate. On a national level, it's, it's extremely hard and challenging to, to coordinate between all the states. Carp are in every state, um, bar Northern Territory within Australia, so um, they're extremely widespread, they're in huge numbers, um, and I suppose it's easy for, for people to perceive that um, nothing's being done. I can tell you that a huge amount of effort and time and, and, uh, and money is spent um, trying to work out ways and means to control them. We're involved within the Lachlan Project with a, a fishing competition now that's been run out of Hilston for, for 20 years this year. And some years they, they'll remove 90 or 100 carp, one year they removed 1,100. So in four days a, a group of you know, local uh, wreck fishers removed nearly two tonnes of carp. So even little carp musters, uh, you can be involved in those and, and, and make an impact at a local level. There are a number of things that landholders can do to improve their uh, riparian health or stream health and uh, we provide incentives to landholders for things like off-stream watering for stock so that stock aren't concentrating around that riparian stream bank area. Also fencing and revegetating um, the streams which is we see is really important and that provides a buffer for overland flow as well all that um, if there's sediment that's coming off adjacent land it's captured within that buffer area um, so that improves water quality as well. We also look at um, erosion, if there's any specific erosion near the stream, we're looking at um, implementing erosion control work and stopping the sediment getting deposited into the stream. Fish, when you fish, throw them up the bank, kill them and, and dispose, dispose them up the bank. Don't use live bait, don't transport them for any reason whatsoever, whether it be yabby bait or anything else. The water quality is one of the major things for the future for health of the nation and all that. It starts where it, the, the rain falls on the, the farmer's country or a national park or wherever it might be and it runs into the catchment area or the stream. It starts there, the problem, and it works its way right to the end where it goes to a, a swamp where it evaporates or it runs into the ocean. It's, uh, I think every person along the, the stream is, plays a, a part in the, the problem. It's no good down the bottom of the stream doing a lot of work and the bloke up the top's not caring and it's the same as the bloke up the top's doing everything spot on and halfway down the person couldn't give a damn and uh, it pleased the stream from then on. So I think everyone is a link in a chain and as we all know the, the weakest point of a chain is the weakest link. So we've got to repair that link and to get everyone involved uh, it is a very hard job. I think it is achievable, uh, in my honest opinion.